In the last video, we seamed all the deck panels together to create one contiguous deck. Now it's time to get rid of all those wood blocks that are between the deck and the pontoons and fill all that in. In going with the theme of our boat to have no wood or metal parts that can rot or rust, I'm going to make little fiberglass pucks that will provide support between the pontoons and the deck. Because the gap varies, I'm going to need to make a bunch of different size of these little fiberglass supports, or pucks as I'm calling them. These little cups are very handy for mixing up the resin, just using a little stick. Next we pour the fiberglass into the cups where I've placed rolls of fiberglass. I like to pour it slowly so that the resin has a chance to really seep in between all the different layers. I'll even take a little stick or something and help to tease the layers apart as the resin seeps in. I'm trying to find that perfect balance between being able to use all of this extra fiberglass that I have, these extra cuttings, and create the strength but not use too much resin. Once the cups are all filled, it's time for them to set up. This can take anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on how much hardener you put in. As these little pucks cure, the chemical reaction can cause it to heat up quite a bit. Usually you're just laying fiberglass down in a couple of layers, but in this case we've got it all concentrated together in a, in a larger piece. Yeah. Once these pucks have had a chance to cure, I tear off all the tops of the paper and take them to the sanding belt and grind them down. As you can see, we've got different sizes here because the gap uh, is on a curve and there's all different size gaps that I need to fill in. To install them, first we put them in place using a little block of wood or a hammer to tap them a little bit as you want them to be firmly in place. Once the pucks are wedged into place, then I use little strips of fiberglass to tab and lock them in. I like to use the cans of Great Stuff Big Gap Filler Expanding Foam. Make sure that you shake up the cans really good as this is going to help you get the maximum amount expansion out of each one of these cans. Like everything with this boat build, we've never done this before, so time to experiment. Using the expanding foam here, I'm going to fill in the gaps. For the bigger areas, we'll be putting in styrofoam to assist with the gap filling. We're at the rear of the boat right now, and where the deck panels connect with the pontoons is a very narrow gap. So what I'm trying to do here is to get the foaming straw as far in there as I can to really fill in the interior parts of this. And I'm trying to form a little wall here so that I can come in from the other side, pack styrofoam in, and then backfill it with expanding foam. Because of all of these little fiberglass puck supports that we put in, like the one you can see there, this foam isn't really necessary for structural support, but I just like that it's a little bit overkill, and it'll also help to muffle some of the noise that's created when you walk around on the deck. Another potential benefit is that over the years, and I hope this boat will last for decades, that one of these little fiberglass pucks might come free if there was a lot of pressure exerted on it or something. If it started to rattle around in there, the foam that's all around it would help to hold it in place. And as I'm telling my kids, when I'm long gone, if there's ever a problem and that puck is vibrating in there, just drill a hole in from the top deck and put in some more expanding foam and it should fix everything. As the foam expands, it'll overfill the area, which is what I'm trying to do here, so that I can come back later and trim it off with a little hacksaw blade. No worries about the foam, we take that and just cram it back into the cavities and spray some more foam in there and it all connects together. So let's go ahead and take a look underneath here and you can see that the foam that we've sprayed in has created that little wall. Now we can backfill a star foam and then add some more spray foam to fill that area in completely. Here you can see the expanding foam has cured a little bit and begun to fill in those areas. Still a bit of work to do, of course. This gives you a good view of all the gap areas that we have to fill from the two pontoons to the cross supports. Here's a little bit of the star foam that we've broken up and begun to insert. It took us four cans of foam for the first half of the pontoon 
and only two cans of foam for the second half as we've learned to cut up the pieces of styrofoam to very carefully fit the crevice and then jam them in using a stick and a hammer that we have. This was a lot better than just putting in small pieces of foam and trying to fill in the gaps around them. For these smaller areas we just went ahead and used straight foam as that's plenty to fill in those little gaps. My son and I make a great team. I cut the pieces for him to size and he jams them in the holes. We worked together and got this part done in no time. Here you can see the foam is as expanded and pushed out of the gap. Still got to come through and sand and trim that all up. Plenty of squeeze out here that will get trimmed up and of course used to fill up somewhere else. But once we get that all sanded down and contoured, then we'll be able to fiberglass it, providing yet another layer of connection for the pontoons to the deck. The cross supports will also get foamed, sanded, and then fiberglassed to the deck, each one of these layers providing yet more rigidity and strength to the overall boat design. Star foam has turned out to be a great material to help fill gaps like this in a boat. It's a closed cell foam and it's super lightweight at roughly one quarter to one fifth the weight of the standard AB foam that you can get for filling in decks. The AB two pound marine foam is quite expensive and did I mention that you can get star foam from free? It's fantastic. It cuts easily, it's super lightweight, it's closed cell, and reusing this material is much better than sending it to the landfill.